Very really pleased with the win. I think it was um, you know a wrong time coming. Really, uh, we didn't start the first ten minutes particularly well. I thought we were very passive. Um, you sat off them a little bit too much, and I was up in the uh, in the tower just trying to get a better view of it. Um, and then the game really sort of kicked into life about sort of fifteen minutes. And then we had a couple of opportunities when we sort of got in behind and they played with quite a high line. Um, and I thought Sean Emmanuel and, and Danny Webb linked really well at times to, to get us up the pitch. Um, and I think the first goal was always going to be always going to be a big one for us. Um, and it was a clever reverse pass from Sean, who puts Alex Butt in, and then Butt has done the thing that we we moaned all season about. We get to those good areas, that byline, and we either put it into the stands and hit the supporter, um, or we cut it back and put them on the counter attack. So it was brilliant to see him fizz it across, and then it's it's an own goal. Um, but it was put in the right areas, drilled across. And, and as a defender myself, they're, they're the toughest ones to defend in that sort of corridor of doom. Um, so I was really pleased with that. And then it's uh, something, we, something we've been really poor at this season in terms of our attacking set pieces. Um, so I was delighted to see Alex Buck get his head on it at the back post and, and obviously find the far post, which was great for us because it was a good header. And if you watch it back on the video, it, it's a very, very small area he's got to hit. Um, so it was a decent delivery and he's done really well. So that was, that was great for him. Um, and then I was hoping we were going to really kick on. And then unfortunately we went into a little bit of self-destruct mode, which is something we've done a lot this season. When we're comfortable in games and you're on top, um, it's then just a case of making sure that you get control of the game. And then it's just two moments of silliness from us, really. One, we had a warning shot about two minutes before, playing a silly backwards pass to a centre half, who takes a bad touch and then they're in. Um, but we managed to get out of trouble. And then it's the second one. It's a, this, it's a really sloppy goal. It's, you know, we give the ball away on a square one in midfield. And then the ball goes through our shape rather than across our shape and the lad scores. So neither so I was overly happy with that goal, but it was, Brilliant for us because what we didn't do is let them then get back into the game and moments later we were sort of 3-1 up. Again, great work by Sean Emmanuel. Uh, watched it back on the video, good strength, good power. Gets himself to the bar and then finds Danny Webb who's in the width of the goal and that's what you want from your strikers. And from that moment on, I thought that uh, we, we were then fairly comfortable within the game. And like I said, Sheffield, if you look at their, their results over the last five, six weeks, have been really good. So it was, a, it was a good win for us, a, a really good result. And we were overall pleased with a lot of facets of the performance, especially when you consider we played on Tuesday, we played on Saturday, and we had quite a heavy fixture log. So to get a uh, get three points was was very, very pleasing. And we probably could have had a couple more late in the game. Um, but yeah, overall, three points was the most important thing. And it was a good three points at home to a very good Sheffield side. Beat my better team. Um, that, that's how I see it. I'm not, I'm not one of these. We, we've had it done to us for two, two and a bit years. It's every time we win a game, it's always about things that they didn't do. And you know, you very rarely get the credit you deserve. Um, I'm, I'm big on the other way. If, if you get beat, take it on the chin. The frustrating thing for us is we obviously went there with a, with a strategy, with a game plan. Um, we weren't going to go out high press for a lot of reasons. Firstly, to high press them, they're, they're very, very good. They'll pick you off. They've got runners that run from deep. They will expose you. They get players who drop in the pockets and create, create moments that can really stretch your lines and stretch your, stretch your units. Um, also, the fact we played Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday, 36 hours before, you're not going to have the elite energy to go and do that for 94 minutes with the best intent in the world. So we knew they'd have a lot of the ball. The plan was very much to, to play with a sort of mid-block, frustrate, and then, you know, look to, look to hurt them on the transition. And for large parts of the first 20, 25 minutes, it worked pretty well. And you think the goalkeeper, Sean, hasn't really had a save to make. Um, every time they got down the outside, you know, we defended the box well, we've stopped crosses. Everything was going pretty well. We had a couple of moments where if we'd done a little bit better, maybe could have, could have, could have nicked the goal on the counter-attack. Well, let's let's have it right. Um, 30 minutes, the lads start a clever little spin on the out edge of the box. It's ricochet, 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 landed to him, and he's got composure, he just rolls at the back of the net. And the disappointing thing for me there was what preceded the last 14 minutes of that half, because all you want to do then is get that 1-0, you're still in the game, and then you can tweak and readjust. And it was moments I said to the bench, I said to, to Dirk and Anthony, I said that we've got to just get in at 1-0, and then it's 2-0 moments after, and then you know the third goal from us is, is even more disappointing because then you're out of the game, you don't get a score. You'll do what score two there, never mind three. Um, and to be honest with you, fair play to Real Bedford, they opened us up, and then fourth goal is an own goal. You know, it's unfortunately from our own doing. You know, it's, it, we, we said afterwards it's scored by Tolu, and we didn't even want Tolu there. The whole plan was to get a centre half and to to make sure I was a lot more aggressive in the second half in terms of trying to push our wing backs on. It was go for it or go home. 
Um, and unfortunately, it's our wing back who's trapped the middle of the goal, and it's you know, it's, it's unfortunate. It's, it's always not intended to do that. Um, and then the, you know the fifth one, it's, obviously we get back into it four one. Then you think, okay, let's uh, salvage a bit of pride. And then it's five one. And, and in all fairness, we were quite lucky on the day because I thought Real Bedford's best bit of play didn't result in a goal. I thought it was, if you look at the five goals, they're very very avoidable from our perspective. But you know, whether whether yeah, you have to go there, you have to play really well. They have to be very poor on the day if you're going to stand any chance. And we were scored by the better team. I, I take nothing away. I give full credit to Real Bedford. They were better than us in every department, as I said afterwards. And I stand by it. Uh, their 16th man on the bench walks into our team, and that and that they're hard facts. They they're realities. We can sit there all day long and make excuses. Sometimes you just have to hold your hands up. It wasn't a lack of effort. Um, I think it was naivety from us in terms of our game management in the first half. Um, even if you take that out, I think you know we, we were we were scored. They ran us all over the pitch, really, and you have to give them full credit for that. And uh, congratulations to Real Bitford. Yeah, so we'll, we'll assess tonight. We're hoping to have Joe Sellers West back for Saturday. Um, Sean Emmanuel unfortunately broke down last Saturday, which is it's been synonymous, unfortunately, with, with Sean's time. And it's you know we see last Thursday against against Sheffield. Uh, a fully fit Sean Emmanuel can, can do real damage, but unfortunately can't seem to get back-to-back -back games. It's not his fault. It's, you know, he's worked incredibly hard over the summer. Just sometimes your body just doesn't allow you to do that. And uh, I don't know what, what the extent of the damage is to him. Um, we've got a couple that are coming back that we think might be in contention. We know Benji Crilly will probably be back for a, a week Saturday, sorry, a week Tuesday against Tring, um, which is good for us because again, he's, he's, he's an influential member. But that's really, in a nutshell, one of our big problems this season is that you cannot seem to get the same level on the pitch every single week. You know, and we're not just losing one, we're not just making one change, we're making six, seven, eight changes sometimes because, you know, we've, 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 um, we've lacked the durability that's required, and especially as the, as the season's progressed, you know, with the fixture backlog and stuff like that, as no, but we're not the only team. There's loads of other teams in the, in the same boat, and uh, unfortunately, as I said, that's synonymous with where we've been. So we'll assess tonight, we'll train tonight, we'll hopeful that nobody will pick up a cold or pick up a sneeze or chip a nail or, I mean, some of the things that players have pulled out for this year has been, um, a bit like seeing our 40 towers, so I don't know what we're gonna what we're gonna anticipate in terms of availability for Saturday. But we need to be close to full strength Saturday to stand a stand a good chance against a very good Irish side that are, are fighting for the title. I tell you what, we will expect if we turn up and we're any less than 100%, we can expect a good tanking. Um, and that's the message that will be to the players tonight. Terry Shreves has done a fantastic job at MK Irish as is his backroom staff. Um, they've got a few players in their group that, that we know well, uh, led marvellously by Ty Ward. You know, we had a good conversation with Ty um, at the end of the conversation, at the end of the, the game when, we, when they comprehensively beat us at their place. And uh, you know, a lot of things he said to me resonated, and it wasn't said out of spite. It was, it was honest, and, and I completely understood. Me, Dirks, and Andy stood with him. Um, they've got a big character in Mason Spence at the front end of the pitch that if you don't deal with him, they've got a platform to play off of and the, 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 the young lad Meadows up front is a real handful. But if you look at it, they've got, they've got real threats at the front end. And what they are is they're bold, they throw bodies forward, they play a uh, quirky system, probably the word I would use in terms of, they seem to have loads of bodies in the middle of the pitch, but what they do is they draw you in and then they leave you 1v1 in wide areas where they've got, you know, whether it be Olakami, whether it be Shreves, they can, they can do you real damage. So you have to, we have to set up a plan to make sure we nullify that. But it goes back to it. If we are where we've been for the vast majority of the last three or four weeks, we give ourselves an opportunity. If we try anything like we did at their place at the end of February, so they'll, they'll give you a good shoeing. Um, and that's, that's what we have to say to our players tonight. There's no excuses going into Saturday. Yeah, it's blowing a gale, it's hammering down with rain. I would suggest that we could be looking at a 3G um, on Saturday, which will be tight, it will be a good surface. They move the ball well, and we have to do exactly the same. Um, that's what we, we have to concentrate on. We, there's certain things that will be out of our control. But, you know, we've got six, six, six games left now, six league games left, and it's important that we uh, we finish the season as strong as we can. I think that's the most important thing that we, we need to now do. We need to reward our supporters with, with, a, with, a, with a win, really. Um, it'll be a good measure, measure point, really, to see what, um, what players are going to be doing next season in terms of will they still have a future here over the next, um, next period of games. I would expect a tight game like they always are. Uh, 
Um, there's, there's not much in them. They're always sort of the odd goal here and there. You don't read, no, no one's, I mean, I think the last time there was a, a big score line was in our first season. Um, you know, Ryan Sturgis, he, he's, he's recruited very well again this year. They, uh, they play out away, you know, but what they have, they've shown us over the years is they will adapt. Um, they certainly did that in the Vols against us where they've gone from playing very much through the thirds to then playing a more direct and of course out again in the Vols. So we were, we played quite well at their place to be fair. It was a game of very few chances and, and we lost, lost late in the, in the last minute. Um, and we're looking to avenge that, but like anything, it's whether you're playing the, the top two teams in the division or you're playing the team at the bottom, there, there's, it will ultimately be on the day who makes the least mistakes. And unfortunately this year we, we've made a lot of mistakes. And, I'm not going to keep harping on about this season. I'm boring myself, never mind boring everybody else that tunes into it. But Tring are a decent side. They, they, they have, obviously now with everything that's gone on over the course of the last tw sort of uh, 12 hours today, they're going to fancy some chances for, a, for an outside push of the playoffs. So they're going to be keen to come here and win. Um, there's a lot of players there that have you know, been involved with us over the years. Obviously, Ryan was involved with us over the years. So um, there's always, a, always a, an edgy game. It's always tight. It's always a close affair. It's one that we want to win. Let's, let's have it straight. We're not, we're not going there to just go and experiment. We want to win the game of football. And um, we know that, again, we're going to have to play well, as they are. Um, but like I said, I, I want to make sure that we don't go out with a whimper. You know, we've had, had our win three times this year. We need to go out on our sword. And um, as I said, it will be go for it now. We've got six games left. We won 18 points. So don't be surprised if come at 1-0, um, you know, if we're 1-0 down, we start throwing bodies forward. And we'll say to people, whether, whether you, you lose 2-0 or you lose 1-0, what's the difference? You've still lost. Um, so yeah, we, we're going to be a lot more front-footed. We want to make sure that we go and put it on teams and um, hopefully we can, we can pull a decent set of results in going into the back end of the season. A question for me, yeah. what are your thoughts on the St. Pat Tillemore leaving the league? What are your thoughts on that? If I'm being completely honest, it's always sad to see a football club um, go out of business. You know, it's terrible. Uh, I will lose no sleep over it. Yeah. And it's sad, it's really sad. But ultimately all I care about is my football club. That's all I care about. Um, I think that's the same with the staff. You know, I've had a lot of messages since this has all happened, like all of a sudden it's gonna be revolutionary for our season. Um, they beat us early in the season, you know, with 10 men, where we shot ourselves in the foot. Um, they've gone out of business. And that's what I always said is, is when you, whenever you're working in football, it's a savage, savage industry. My job, first and foremost, when we came here, as I always said to this football club, whatever time I depart, was leaving the football club in, 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 a, in a safe space. And this football, our football club nearly went out of business. It's well documented. We were very close to doing exactly the same thing, which is sad. But had we have gone out of business, how many people would have lost sleep if we'd gone out? They wouldn't have. Um, you know, they, were, they were a very good side. They had some very, very good players. They were a difficult side to play against. Um, and you know, their, their owner's done the best he can with what he had, but unfortunately, for whatever reasons, I don't know the ins and outs, it's not something I'll pick the phone up and find out, it's none of my business. My business is Dunstable Town and making sure that we, we find a way to win on Saturday. I don't know what it's gonna do with regards to, to leagues. I know there'll be a lot of people out there wanting to know what's gonna happen. Um, I'm not even gonna look at it, to be honest with you, because we, as far as I see at the moment, we're gonna need to find a way to get 18 points from six games, whether we're in it or we're not. Do we deserve to be in it? 100% we don't. So I'm sorry to hear Sam Pat tell him when I've gone. That's disappointing for any football club to go out of business, but unfortunately I care about my football club and any manager that tells you they're gonna lose sleep tonight over it is talking um, a little bit of nonsense because all they care about is winning Saturday. And if we're being really cynical, all teams care about is do the points that they've either lost or gained against Sam Pat tell them or count for their league position this year, etc. right? And uh, I'll quite happily say that.